Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel. So guess what? Today I have a much requested review on the RespoCare FDA approved NIOSH N95 with antimicrobial properties and turbocharged. It was a cheap reference to one of my favorite funny movies. So if anybody knows what movie I was referencing there, just put it in the comment box. And if you want to hear my review, just keep watching. Yeah, so I'm so glad I heard about this RespoCare N95. I had several people ask me to review it, and I'm so glad they did. And guys, please, I so appreciate um, all the recommendations and suggestions on masks. Please understand, I read every single one of them, but I have to pick and choose which ones I'm going to buy. Um, so there's my place to do my usual plug, which is that my channel is a public service. I don't have any affiliate links on my channel because I don't want any bias that commissions can create. Yeah, I pick and choose which masks and respirator in this case to purchase for review. So thank you so much for those of you who have subscribed and recommended to other people to subscribe. I thank you so much. I hope the channel keeps growing and I'm just so pleased with it. So thank you. Anyway, so this is a very interesting N95 and for a couple of reasons. One is that it is marketed for the general lay public. So you can purchase an N95 without the concern that you are diverting resources that are needed by health professionals and people on the front lines. So this is for the lay public. And the other thing is that, like I said, it has some antimicrobial properties, which a regular N95 does not have. So it's arguable that this is superior to an N95, but we're going to talk about that. So the RespoCare is made by a, a company named Innovex, and the distributor is called the N95 Mask Company. I'm going to link that down below. You purchase the product through the N95 mask company. Now, like I said, it's not an affiliate link. The link is just there to take you to the product. I'm also going to link below the page to the FDA website that shows that the Innovex uh, N95s are on the list of approved respirators. So this is a disposable mask. These aren't cheap, guys. Get ready. Depending on how many you buy, uh, the price does get cheaper per item the more quantity you buy. So I bought a four-pack. They come in this... Ziploc bag with four respirators inside. The four pack is $49.95. Um, just to give you some reference, a 10 pack is $89.99, a 20 pack $179 and change, a 50 pack $399 and change. So at the price point that I bought with four of them, it comes out to be $12.49 per respirator. Um, but if you get down to like 50 masks or respirators, I should say, the price is more like $8 per respirator. And at 5,000 respirators, which is the largest quantity they sell, each one is a cheap $650. Um, the shipping and handling on these for anything under $149 is a flat fee of $70. $17. Uh, that's an express ship overseas. These come from Hong Kong. Um, it's a three-day ship, but in fact, it took five days to get to me. I think there's, you know, a day wasted on either end. Once you purchase $149 or more of merchandise, then that same three-day express ship overseas is free. They do have a 30-day return policy, but I noticed that it's not aimed at letting you try something and see how you like it. Everything has to be in its original sealed packaged condition, unused, untried. So it's more aimed at maybe you ordered too many or you changed your mind about the order altogether. Now, I did notice that in the event you do want to return some of these and they are eligible for return, they don't have to go all the way back to Hong Kong, you will have to ship them to an address in New York and get a return authorization code. Now, this comes in one size only, so it's one size fits most adults. It is disposable, so it's not washable. Of course, they recommend following the CDC guidelines and not to reuse these, not to wash them, launder them, clean them, dry them out or anything else. They're good for about eight hours. They are capable of blocking 95% of particle size 0.3 microns and larger, just like any other N95. But in addition, these boast the ability to eradicate up to 99.99% of microbes on the surface. Now I'm just going to show you the respirator itself. So it's, it's just this, it looks like polypropylene. Of course, they don't say it. They say non-woven material. It feels like polypropylene, looks like polypropylene. I'm going to show you the inside. Same thing. You see that kind of waffle pattern. Um, when you open it up, it's got a very thin piece of foam. I don't know. If, there, you can see it right side up. That goes around the nose. It's opposite the nose band. And this is a very... Um, dense foam. I'm going to try to show you. It doesn't have much spring to it. It's maybe hard to see because everything's white and there's no contrast, but 
This sort of reminded me of like a memory foam. I did a video a while back reviewing a product um, that was supposed to work like an N95, uh, the germless products, and it had a layer of foam all the way around it as well to help you achieve a seal. It didn't have anything close to a seal, but it was a very lightweight foam, and I said I was sort of expecting it to be more like a dense memory foam. This is almost like the foam-backed tape that you find um, in like first aid section. So it, it's very dense. Now the mask is made out of four layers. So I'm just gonna go um, from the inside out. So the four layers include one, a what they call a soft material that is water resistant. Now that is different than what I've talked about with masks. Again, this isn't a mask, it's a respirator, but this is a really good opportunity to just have a sidebar here and explain how you can't cross reference between a mask and a respirator. They're apples and oranges, they're very different things. Um, this is really manufactured almost solely with the protection of the wearer in mind, almost nothing else. It is perfectly acceptable, therefore, that it doesn't have the same features that I've said I've been looking for in a fabric mask. So the inside in this case is water resistant and soft. Um, the next layer out is the antimicrobial layer, and that uses a copper and zinc technology and says it's capable of reducing microbial load by up to 99.99%. Within two minutes is what they say, and I'm going to talk about that later. Um, but just to give you a sense, it's not 99.99 no matter what it is. So they do give a list of different uh, bacteria and viruses that they've tested. So Now, these are all very impressive numbers, but I just wanted to be really clear about that. So the next layer to the outside is the filter, and that's what traps particles that can get through the first layer. And then finally, the outside is a hydrophilic plastic that increases permeation of liquid. So hydrophilic means it's non-water resistant. Not only is it not, it's absorbent. So this is sort of the opposite of what we look for in the fabric masks where we like the outside to be water resistant. This is actually supposed to pull water in, pull respiratory drops in so that they can be subjected to that filter and that antimicrobial layer. Now, in addition to that, this outer layer has an acidic coating. So it has a very low pH, which is very inhospitable to microbes. So this alone is a little bit antimicrobial, but the real heavy hitting comes with the layer that has the copper and the zinc technology. So let's just take a look with our usual water droplet test. We're going to find the opposite results that we're usually looking for. This is the outside layer, and just like they say, they do beat up, but they will absorb in. It's just kind of a slower absorption, but you can see that they're really not rolling. And slowly they sink in. So that's the outside. I'm sacrificing this one mask. <laughs> and then on the inside, I hope you can see that. It just rolls off. Sometimes it's hard for me to get a good picture when something is white. I can't always see what I'm supposed to see inside the camera. Um, but it does roll right off. So that made me wonder, are we going to have an issue with moisture inside of this respirator? All right, so I want to go ahead and put this on for you, but I want to show you the proper way to put on a respirator. It's not a mask again. So I know I've said in the past with some of these fabric masks that have the head straps, I always say I think it's easier to get it all the way down on your neck and then work from the bottom up. Um, with a respirator, what's really important is a seal. A mask is not supposed to seal. A respirator is. And it's not that it it might work just fine going from the neck up, but I do believe that putting it on properly does inform the seal. So I'm just going to show you how you're supposed to do that. You start out with the front, get the nose piece situated. It'll kind of sit there. You do get a little leverage on this nose piece. And then you start with the mask strap that is the top. So you can see this is the top strap, this is the bottom strap. You start with the top strap and you set that up high wherever you're going to have it on the back of your head, okay? And then you pull the bottom one all the way over and attest, attach it at the bottom. Okay, mine sits there. Mine doesn't have that much tension on the bottom. And you know, guys, I wondered about this. I thought, how am I going to get a seal with this? It's just all flat fabric. I'm a little bit skeptical about it. So the first thing is, even with an N95, they have to be fitted and fit, and fit tested. 
So we're going to make up our own fit test here. The important thing is going to be getting it to conform up at the top. So I take a big deep breath in, it sucks in, and that's actually good. I know some people don't like it, but it means I'm pulling the air in through the mask, not so much around it. And when I breathe out really hard, I maybe feel a little bit coming up toward this eye. So that tells me I've probably got to adjust the fit. Now, sometimes adjusting it starts with the band. With the top head strap. That's much better. Okay, so all I did is I moved that top head strap a little bit higher so it was a little bit tighter on my head. It occurs to me that maybe some people are going to do better with adjusters. So at this point, I don't feel any wind with a hard exhale. It feels like everything is lingering in the mask and having to go through the fabric. So let's try the safety goggles. My dirty safety goggles, I really need to clean these. It's getting to the point where I'm going to think I'm fogging and I'm not. I have a little bit right here. So let me see. It's the same eye that I felt like I had some leak. So this is actually a good opportunity here because just like an N95, if you were working on the front lines in the hospital, that N95 would have to be properly fitted. It's not enough to just get an N95 and throw it on your face and think that you're getting the seal. And in order for this to work the way it's been tested and demonstrated to work, it has to be sealed. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's better. I don't have any fogging now. No fogging. Okay, check, good. You've done a nice job, it's a nice product. All right, so I thought I would just talk about my opinion about this particular product. So one concern that I have has to do with the antimicrobial properties of the mask. So I don't doubt the data that they're giving us, meaning 99% effective against this organism or 90% effective against that organism, but they do say uh, that it's within two minutes. And then they also mark it on their website that therefore one can take this mask off, respirator off, and handle this without worrying about the biohazard. And I have to say, I do take issue with that. Now, I tried to dig a little deeper on that. So I contacted N95 Mask Company, and the N95 Mask Company sent me over to Innovex, and Innovex sent me over to Respicare, and I didn't hear anything more. I didn't hear back from Respicare on this. So I'm hoping they clarify it, and if they do, I will update the information in the description box below. But I did say that, you know, I have now looked at several different masks that offer some kind of antimicrobial activity, and while they all say that they begin working on contact, they usually take a matter of hours, like about two hours, I'd say, is pretty much the rule to completely eradicate something like 99% of an, a viral load. So to get to peak effectiveness. And I'd like to believe that this achieves that same job in two minutes, but like that's really hard to believe here, right? So I kind of wonder if this didn't get extrapolated. Like I'm not saying that they're meaning to mislead anybody, but I wouldn't doubt that it starts working in two minutes. I would very much doubt that it's done. So until I hear otherwise, um, I don't think that I would handle this in the way they say where I have complete reckless disregard for any biohazard on it. I think I will still um, would still view this as a biohazard if I had to take it off and put it back on again in short order. And it's not the kind of thing like with some of the masks that I've talked about where they use antimicrobial textiles where you're going to be letting it sit overnight and then using it again because this is a one-time use item. So if I have to take this thing off and then put it on, like let's say after lunch, I would wash my hands before I take it off, then take it off, then wash my hands again, have my lunch or do whatever I'm going to do, and then wash my hands, put it on, wash my hands. So I just wouldn't assume that it's done with that work. And I do take issue with them marketing that given that they're not 
uh, putting up the testing. They do show the results of testing in terms of the relative percentages of efficacy against certain viruses and bacteria, like I just stated, but they don't show any of the empirical evidence that this is completely achieved in two minutes. So that's one issue I have with this product. So I do want to mention one other concern that I have about this product, which is this hydrophilic outside. So meaning this outside is water absorbent, like I showed when I did the test drop. It's designed to absorb drops to come into the mask. So this might be more of a feeling thing and less empirical because this did pass testing. It is on the FDA's list of approved N95 respirators. And some N95 respirators are hydrophilic on the outside, while others are hydrophobic, meaning that the water will beat up and roll off. Most have the water beating up and rolling off. I would be lying if I were to say that I'm not just a tiny bit uncomfortable with a material that's designed to encourage the absorption of respiratory droplets. Now, of course, there is water resistant material on the way in. So as I also stated, this fabric that sits right next to the face is water resistant. So there is something water resistant between um, this absorbent layer on the very outside and the inside. And it could even be that the inside of this outside layer, this layer could be absorbent on one side and hydrophobic or repellent of water on the other side. That's possible too. So I know that this has passed its testing of water resistance. I personally, would just like it better if this were designed to be water repellent on the outside, very outside of the outside layer as well. As to whether the inside of this outside layer is hydrophobic, that's another question that I have yet to get answered. If I do, I will put that in the description box and update. Up until now, as I said, I haven't heard back on a couple things. That's one of them. But I guess I just don't see why it wouldn't be better to have this outside layer hydrophobic, so repelling water. Most N95s repel from the outside. So that's one thing that I would just be lying if I said it didn't bother me. That said, this had to pass some rigorous testing to be on the list of FDA approved respirators. I can't say that I don't recommend it. So would I use this? You know, I'm really not sure. Um, first of all, I've said on this channel before that I try to shy away from disposables. I felt like that this, because it did pass the rigorous testing and it is on an FDA approved list, um, I felt like it was really worth a look. And it's testing alone and it's certification alone tells me that it's a good product that's functioning as it's supposed to be. But my thought is that this kind of a product, an N95, really addresses issues like aerosols. And I've said in another video that I did a while back on how to choose a mask, that when it comes to being in an environment where there is likely a significant amount of aerosol being generated, I feel like that that speaks more to other mitigation factors. So when I've had people ask me for some help in deciding on what kind of a mask to choose for a given situation, my first question is always, what can you manipulate about the environment? Not like, let's look to a mask to solve these problems. So can you get the windows open? Do you have any say over who else is wearing a mask? Is it your classroom? Can you require that your students wear masks in the room? Can you have the windows open and the fans running? Can you get it a little, um, a little less dry in the room? That kind of thing. I think just not generating aerosols in the first place is really what's going to go a much longer way than looking to like a particular product to solve the problem. Because by the way, at 95% of particles, 0.3 microns and larger still leaves, you know, 5%. And not only that, but when you're talking about COVID, some of the aerosolized particles are smaller than 0.3 microns. Now, most penetration of aerosol studies have shown come from inadvertent leakage around the mask and not something that accidentally got through the filter. So that's really remote. The chance of that is just very unlikely. But I'm, I guess I'm just trying to say that I still don't see much of a place for this in like my everyday life. Now, there might be occasions where like I have to travel, I have to be in an airport and on airplanes for a long period of time. And then if I have a stash of a couple of these laying around, that might be the application for it. So that might be the time to use an N95. But again, depending on what other people are doing, like if masks are required all around, then a lot of these other concerns come off the table. And then I'm back to that. I don't see much place for this in my life, but you know, that might not be your situation. So I'm really glad that I had a chance to look at this. 
I do think that as long as I'm looking at something disposable, this makes a lot more sense than some of the masks I've looked at in the past. There was a video I did on masks I didn't review. A lot of them fell into a category of masks that were originally aimed at pollution, things they needed, uh, repeated filter replacements. And really, by the time you're done replacing filters, you know, you could have an FDA approved respirator for the price of a filter. So I feel more comfortable recommending something like this um, if I'm going to go the way of something disposable than I am looking at some of these masks that require um, continuous replacement of filters that still don't meet this standard and aren't sealed. So I hope that helped. I, I hope you guys will let me know if you've tried it. I think it's really helpful to other viewers when you guys share your own experiences with these products because like I'm just one person and um, my experience is only that of one but it's so helpful for me also to read the comments and everything that you guys share so anyway I just want to say thank you again I really am so happy with the way the channel is growing I've made it my business to stay true to my original goal for this channel would be that it's a public service and it will just have to grow. And I'm very happy with the way it's growing. So thank you to those of you who have subscribed. If you haven't, I hope you will. Um, and thank you for sharing with people who might find it helpful. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.